let us start our today's lecture on soil dynamics. We are continuing with our module 5 that is machine foundations. A quick recap what we had studied in the previous lecture. Also, we have seen the examples, we have worked out the example for rocking and yawing modes of vibration by applying elastic half space theory for three different types of soil, again for two types of excitation, constant force type and rotating mass type excitation. Now, coming to rotating mass type excitation. for B theta equals to 0.5 from that design chart again, once again let me show it here. This is the value of 1, so 0.5 is somewhere here, so that is why I got two different values for rotating mass type and constant force type. I am reading A naught m as 2.4, you can extend the graph actually and get the values because here no limit has been mentioned. Like for vertical case, we have seen Leismer's limit is there, but here is no such limit. So, for design consideration, you can extend it. And if we put this expression back to the calculation of our F m for three different types of soil, F m I am getting as 2615 r p m. F m with g equals to 100, is this ok, 2615. Next one I am getting 3594 r p m and F m with g equals to 200, I am getting as 4822 r p m. So, again the comment for this design will be they are far away from the proposed operating frequency of 1500 rpm, hence safe. So, with these calculations, we have come to the end of this solution of the problem and also with this, we have now come to the end of our module 5 that is machine foundations. So, we are completing the machine foundation module here. Let us start today's lecture of soil dynamics. Today, we will start with module 6 of this course soil dynamics. In this module 6, we will talk about soil improvement techniques various soil improvement techniques which are necessary for liquefaction hazard mitigation and many other similar things. So, we will discuss in this module what are the different ground improvement techniques which generally we follow or should be followed. Let us see here the liquefaction mitigation methods, what are the various methods by which we can improve the soil condition, so that the liquefaction susceptibility of a particular soil can be reduced or mitigated. So, methods to mitigate the effects of soil liquefaction due to the dynamic loading have been devised by earthquake engineers and include various soil compaction techniques. What are those techniques? Like vibro compaction which is a compaction of the soil by at a particular depth using the vibrators, then dynamic compaction and vibro stone columns. So, these are three common compaction techniques by which we can reduce the soil liquefaction susceptibility of a particular location of soil by improving its condition. These methods what it does? It densifies the soil. 
and that enables the structure constructed on that soil to withstand the soil liquefaction under any cyclic loading. Let us see what are these various types of soil improvement or ground improvement techniques. The first one as we have mentioned the vibro compaction. In this case compaction of granular soils like cohesionless material by using depth vibrators which are commonly known as vibro compaction technique is used in this compaction method. And the method is also commonly known as vibro flotation. Natural deposits as well as artificially reclaimed sands can be compacted using this vibro flotation or vibro compaction technique up to a typical depth of about 70 meter. So, which is a pretty a large depth as we have already discussed during the liquefaction hazard assessment and studies liquefaction analysis uh, while discussing the theory etcetera. We mentioned typically up to a depth of about 30 meter below the ground we generally consider the liquefaction hazard assessment etcetera. So, that is why in this case if we are able to densify the soil up to a depth of 70 meter which automatically comes within the zone of our interest for the liquefaction mitigation. So, that is why it is very useful for this purpose. The intensity of that compaction can be varied to meet the particular bearing capacity criteria at each and every depth of the soil. Other improvement effects like reduction of both total and differential settlements also can be achieved in addition to this liquefaction susceptibility reduction. So, this risk of liquefaction in an earthquake prone area is drastically reduced by this process of vibro flotation or vibro compaction. So, let us see what is the basic principle of this vibro compaction or vibro flotation process. Initially the soil grains in the cohesionless soil material or granular material which we are discussing as we know typically loose sand can be susceptible for liquefaction at a particular magnitude of earthquake depending on various other input conditions. So, if the loose state of that granular material is something like this by using this vibro compaction technique there is a basically total two step process by which we can finally, get the denser compacted soil material of that granular nature in this fashion. So, in between there is a process which is known as flotation where the, so, during the vibration the loose granular material will change from this state to a flotation state where there will be instead of a compression there will be a kind of an increase in the volume in that portion which is a concerned for our study, but final effect will be you can see the reduction finally, it will settle and densify and this will be final state of the cohesionless granular material after this vibro compaction. So, the principle of that sand compaction or vibro flotation is like this the compaction process consists of a flotation of the soil particles as a result of vibration. So, this is the reason for which it change the state which then allows for a rearrangement of the particles into a denser state. So, then it goes through the settlement process of the soil material and finally, reached a denser state of the soil. So, the step by step procedure of vibro compaction is shown here. The first step is penetration. You can see in this picture 
the first this vibro probe this called vibro probe which is penetrated to the required depth that is the depth where we want to densify the loose soil present at a particular site at a particular depth. So, the vibro probe should be penetrated up to that depth where the densification is necessary by the vibration and the jetting action of water and or air is applied for this vibro compaction process. The second step in this vibro compaction is the state of compaction that is the vibro probe this vibro probe which was inserted at a particular depth is retracted in about 0.5 meter intervals at various depths and the in situ sand or gravel is flowing towards the vibro probe. So, you can see here in the picture how it is flowing towards the vibro probe. The third step and last step in this vibro compaction process is after this compaction this dark colored zone as you can see slowly this vibro probe will be taken out. So, after compaction the working platform needs to be leveled. So, wherever the work was going on finally, it has to be a leveled ground and this vibro probe will be taken out and eventually a roller compacted top finish will be made in this vibro compaction process. So, let us see now what are the various effects of this vibro compaction that is what are the things are getting affected or change in the soil properties due to this vibro compaction technique. In this case the sand and gravel particles they rearrange into a denser state that is initially they will be in the loose condition which will be transferred through this vibro compaction technique into a denser material a denser state of this sand. So, a loose sand will become a dense sand a loose gravel material will become a denser state of gravel material. The second effect is the ratio of horizontal to vertical effective stress is increased significantly. So, if the horizontal to vertical effective stress increases what will be the advantage in this case the effect of confinement in the soil at a particular depth increases. So, which is obviously very helpful for mitigation of liquefaction hazard. The third effect is the permeability of the soil is reduced 2 to 10 fold depending on various factors. The fourth factor is the friction angle of the material it typically increases by about 8 degrees. So, this is another advantage which is obtained through the shear strength property of the soil through this vibro compaction technique. Then enforced settlements of the compacted soil mass are in the range of 2 percent to 15 percent and typical value can be considered as 5 percent. That is due to this vibro compaction what we have seen the various phases it goes through the vibration then a settlement occurs. So, that amount of settlement is varying between 2 percent to 15 percent depending on various other conditions soil condition etcetera initial state of the uh, soil, but typically about 5 percent it can be considered that is the total settlement of that compacted soil mass can be expected. And another major advantage we get from this vibro compaction is that the stiffness or the modulus of the soil it can be increased uh, by about 2 to 4 fold of its initial value. So, if the stiffness of the soil or the modulus of the soil increases by 2 to 4 times of its initial value obviously, it will provide better
state for reduction of the liquefaction susception. So, in that way the stiffness and modulus increase helps the soil not to get liquefied as its value is increased by about 2 to 4 fold due to this vibro compaction method. Let us see how this vibro compaction takes place at a site. So, this is a typical test pattern which is shown over here various pattern pattern A pattern B, pattern C, pattern D, pattern E are shown here. These are the locations, the black spots are location for CPT or dynamic probing locations and these white open circles, those are the locations where this vibro compaction can be provided. So, these type of typical triangular grid pattern can be applied at a site at typical distances of say 3.10 meter or 3.40 meter or 3.70 meter or 4 meter or 4.30 meter depending on the requirement of the site and the amount of increase in the various parameters of the soil to be improvised or the densified. And this distance is also typical distances are shown over here. So, using this typical pattern what we can say about the test pattern that on large projects the optimal compaction grid spacing has to be determined by the test grids that is initial first few trial test needs to be carried out and after that trial test then for the large project it needs to be decided that how much is the improvement of the soil by choosing a very particular type of grid and spacing. So, that through again using CPT or dynamic probe technique, we can find out how much improvement in the soil state or soil property is achieved and that is what we can then further mention that this pattern can be adopted for the entire project. So, the compaction effect in the test grids should be as close as possible to the treatment in the later production areas. Because if the compaction test grids are very close to the treatment area, then obviously it can give a better idea how much improvement of the soil has taken place. Now, in order to achieve this, it is advisable to arrange the test grids close to each other. So, the distance between grid A that is 3.10 meter spacing grid which we have shown just now and grid B which is 3.40 meter spacing. I will go back to that slide. So, here this grid A at a spacing of 3.10 meter whereas, grid B at 3.40 meter spacing. Now, what should be the distance between these two that needs to be find out. So, that is what it is computed over here this d distance between this grid a and grid b pattern can be estimated like 3.10 for this 3.40 for this by 2 into root over 3 by 2 that gives us the value of 2.82 meter. So, if we go back we can see this distance between pattern A and pattern B is specified or calculated and put as 2.82 meter. Now, let us see what are the various options for vibro compaction technique like it can be either offshore vibro compaction or the land based vibro compaction method. Now, while the principle of this vibro compaction that is flotation of grains into a denser state by the process of vibration is a simple concept. We have already understood this. The application of the technology in an optimal manner is still an art and that few have mastered this art at field. 
So, the difficulty of this application of this vibro compaction at different cases or like either offshore or land based lies in the many parameters that can be varied and the narrow band in which those parameters have to be adjusted to deliver the desired results. So, some of the parameters that can be varied are like type of the vibrator that we can have different types of vibrator and we can achieve a different set of compaction effort or the vibration effort which can lead to a particular desired value of our densified soil material or we can have a control on the grid spacing, we can vary this grid spacing holding time per depth interval that is how long that vibro probe needs to be kept at a particular depth. So, that it is ensured that entire vibration followed by the settlement has occurred fully and the soil has reached from loose to a denser state by this process. Then another parameter which can be varied is the water pressure, how much jet pressure, water pressure is used for this vibro compaction. Also the location at which location it is applied, what type of soil is present and what type of water jets are used. So, based on all these parameters and by varying these any one or combinations of these parameters, a uh, perfect vibro compaction at field can be achieved, but still it is really an art to achieve this at site. If we see a typical application of offshore vibro compaction, you can see here the land use etcetera, whereas you have C and here C wall front. So, this portion if needs to be compacted. So, this part shows the land compaction of sand fill after reclamation and this part is showing marine deep compaction before this rock fill. So, how this compaction is taken place? This is this offshore application of the vibro compaction process. It was practically used on the North Lantau Express way of Hong Kong for compaction of a loose sand fill in preparation for the placement of a rock fill sea wall on this sand fill. So, this sand fill was vibro compacted at offshore by using the vibro compaction technique. Whereas, land based vibro compaction for that also we have several example. So, here offshore, here land based like Penny's Bay, Hong Kong, one of the world's largest vibro compaction project where this Penny's Bay reclamation has been made by the use of land based vibro compaction technique. Let us come to the next one, the concept of stone columns and the liquefaction mitigation by using this stone columns. Loose sandy soils below the water table, they have a tendency to get liquefied when any earthquake comes of a certain magnitude depending on various other parameters as we have already discussed in our liquefaction theory. So, to prevent this stone columns can be installed and it have it has a threefold effect. What are those effects? Like they drain the soil that is the permeability increases that is in other words the pore pressure which gets generated get a better chance to get dissipated by using the stone columns. Now, they compact loose sand and gravel layers by providing the stone columns and also they reinforce layers that cannot be compacted and facilitate drainage 
mainly very silty sands to sandy silt. So, the vibro replacement using the stone column method is such that the vibro replacement stone column is a ground improvement technique that constructs dense aggregate stone columns by means of a crane which is suspended downhole vibrator to reinforce all soils and densify granular soil. And in this case, it improves the load bearing capacity and reduce the settlement of the soil. So, obviously, the state of the soil is gets improvised by this vibro replacement stone column method. On many occasions, it is noted that the local soil is by nature unable to bear the proposed structural load. Hence, the use of the ground improvement technique by the stone column may be necessitated. So, use of the stone column is one of the technique to improve the local weaker soil I will say to improvise it further. So, the stone column consists of crushed coarse aggregates of various sizes. The ratio in which the stones of different sizes will be mixed is decided by design criteria. So, how to decide on that mixing proportions etcetera that comes under the purview of design of stone column. So, as we have just now mentioned the crushed aggregates in the diff definite proportion are to be placed into the soil at regular intervals. So, at various regular intervals we keep on placing this crushed aggregate at a design mixed proportion at different locations and that throughout the area of the land where the bearing capacity of the soil needs to be improved has to be applied. So, this is done either by using the dry bottom feed or the wet top feed vibrators which are forced into the ground. So, these are two techniques by which we can put this crushed stone columns or crushed stones into the entire area by using dry bottom feed or wet top feed vibrators. In this case, the bottom feed vibro placement stone columns performed to a depth of 105 feet to reinforce the soils for seismic lateral spread mitigation for the construction of an extension of a port facility in Takuma. This has been used already using the bottom feed vibro placement of the crushed stone to improve the soil condition at a port facility. The aggregates are then allowed to take the place of that displaced soil which exerts a pressure on the surrounding soil. Hence, it helps to improve the soil's load bearing capacity because obviously, if you replace the softer soil with this improved crushed aggregates which are having a better strength and in a denser state obviously, it will have a more load bearing capacity than the original softer soil. So, the vibrating pore breaks down the pores of the surrounding soil thereby densifying the entire soil profile. The crushed aggregates or the gravel that is poured in takes the place of the soil and keeps up the pressure on the soil that was created by that vibrating probe. And these stone columns are made across the area to be built on a grid pattern at regular intervals. So, in this case also we apply the stone columns we construct the stone columns in the grid fashion in regular intervals. So, this is the way how 
the stone columns are getting constructed as we can see in this picture here, here, here stone columns are getting constructed which obviously replaces the soft loose local soil with a crushed stone material in the form of a column that provides a better load carrying capacity for the entire structures to be constructed on this soil. So, in the process the soil gets densified and better. Let us see what are those two techniques, one is bottom feed technique and another one is wet top feed process. In the wet top feed process the vibrator penetrates to the design depth by means of the vibrator's weight, its own weight will take and penetrate at a particular depth where it needs to be improvised the soil condition and the vibrations as well as the water jets located in the vibrator's tip. So, obviously, the vibrator's weight and the water jet at the top or tip portion of the vibrator tip will allow the vibrator to reach to a particular depth, so that it can then further construct the stone column. The stone or crushed stone or recycled concrete is then introduced at the ground surface to the annular space around that vibrator created by jetting of the water and the stone falls through the annular space to the vibrator tip and fills the void created as the vibrator is lifted several feet up. The vibrator is then lowered, then densifying and displacing the underlying stone. The vibro replacement process is repeated until a dense stone column is constructed to the ground surface. So, that is what we were showing in the previous picture as you can see here this crushed stone or used concrete remains can be put through a vibrator at this location and slowly slowly this is lifted up and to make sure that the entire portion is made of that stone column which is getting finally constructed up to the ground level and till the level of your desired depth where the improvement is necessary. So, this is the technique which is used at site. This picture shows how the weight top feed process is carried out. This picture is taken from Hong Kong North Lantau Expressway when the use of stone columns were going on. Taiho section of MTRC traction substation, 8000 meter cube of stone columns. You can see over there the crushed stones are getting fed into this and finally, the stone column is getting constructed. So, what are the step by step procedure for this weight top feed process similar to the vibro compaction technique here also first the penetration that is the vibro probe penetrates to the required depth by vibration and jetting action of the water and or air and the self weight of course. In the second phase the compaction is done and all these stones and crushed stone material is getting injected over here and filled up and completion is after compaction the working platform finally, needs to be leveled once the stone column get constructed like this as we can see in this picture. Now, where to use this weight top feed method, where the compaction of sandy and gravelly layers is required and those layers are located above the water table, then compaction is generally better accomplished with this weight method than with the dry method because as the flushing water assist in compaction of the sandy soil around the column. And where particularly clean stone columns are required, there 
this wet top feed method is used, the flushing water automatically cleans the columns during its installation because water jet is using and flushing water technique is adopted for this wet top method. So, wet top method basically applies to a dry soil as well as it helps us to get a clean stone column to get constructed at a site. Also, wherever there are no contaminants in the soil and the soil is not a highly plastic clay leading to the problem of handling the mud in the process of water, there this wet top method can be used. Where space is available for 500 square meter settling pond and where the installation crew has sufficient experience in more demanding installation methodology, there also wet top feed method is proposed to be used. Now, let us come to the next method which is known as down bottom feed process. So, in down bottom feed process, down bottom feed stone columns were invented in Germany way back in 1970s. They are particularly useful if washout of the soil to the surface is to be prevented. That is in earlier case, we are washing out the soil as well as stone column, but if we want it to be prevented in that case, this dry bottom feed stone column method needs to be adopted or where handling of process water for the wet top method is problematic, there we should go for the other method of this down bottom feed process. So, in the down bottom feed process as the name or the requirement suggest no water jets are used in this case and the stone is fed to the vibrator tip through a feed pipe attached to the vibrator. So, pre drilling of dense strata at the column location may be required for the vibrator to penetrate to the design depth. Both methods of construction create a high modulus stone column that reinforces the treatment zone and densifies surrounding granular soil. So, in this case no use of water directly the crushed stones are piped through or feed through a pipe with the vibrator. So, if we look at the step by step procedure for this dry bottom feed method, in this case the first step is penetration that is the vibro probe penetrates to the required depth where it needs to be improvised by vibration and jetting action of air. So, let us note it here, here we are not using water, but we are using air because it is a dry method and installation is the second step in this. What we do? We add the gravel or the crushed stones through a tremie pipe. Through a tremie pipe, we are adding this gravels or crushed stones here alongside the vibro probe creates this stone column and slowly, slowly this stone column get constructed once you lift it up slowly. And the third and last step in this dry bottom feed is completion. The column diameter, this column diameter it can vary depending on the initial stiffness or the density of the soil. Like differential settlements are greatly reduced by allowing more gravel to be placed in weaker soil regions. If you can see over here, more gravels are allowed or more crushed stones are allowed with a higher diameter of the stone column at a weaker location, so that the differential settlement altogether can be reduced at the site. The required diameter at any depth interval can be sensed by observing the vibro probes motor current, which is an excellent indicator of the confinement of the machine into the soil. 
Now, where do we use this dry bottom feed method? This dry bottom feed stone columns, these are successfully used on large infrastructure projects like earth dams, highway embankments, airport runways, port facilities and under large industrial structures like oil tanks, silos etcetera. And they are a common choice for foundations in liquefiable soil in earthquake prone areas, because in earthquake prone area we already have soil below water table typically which needs to be densified. So, in that case wet process will not serve our purpose actually it will cause more problem or it will create more susceptibility for the liquefaction at that soil location instead of using wet process or water jet if we go for this dry bottom feed method that will be the best option of soil densification using this technique. So, that is why it says it is good for the foundations in liquefiable soil in the earthquake prone areas. Coming to the V rex, the V rex is a state of the art custom built machine for this dry bottom feed stone column rigs. So, this V rex is used for the dry bottom feed method. Some of the advanced features include built in data acquisition, easy mobilization and demobilization, modular leader extension and process control computer combined with electronic winches drives rig during column installation on autopilot. So, this V rex which is commonly used for dry bottom feed stone column construction is having this additional advantages. The vibro stitcher what is it? The need for a fast, very fast and very efficient method for forming of shallow to medium depth this dry bottom feed stone columns lead to the development of the method or technique which is called stitcher. What are the advantages of the vibro stitcher? Like simple in operation, no high tech gravel transport support system is required vibro probe can be pushed down with force to preload the column while producing it and to speed up the process. Vertically of the vibro probe can be controlled and corrected by the excavator either manually or automatically. So, this is a typical picture of a vibro stitcher which can be operated manually or automatically using this type of technique bottom uh, dry bottom feed method the feeding of the stone are taking place through this. There is no water involved that we can note over here. So, vibro replacement stone columns have been used to increase the bearing capacity and to decrease the settlement and to mitigate the liquefaction potential for all types of plant structures like buildings, embankments, dams, tanks, towers etcetera. Vibro replacement rigs can be fully instrumented with an onboard computer to monitor specific parameters. Monitoring these parameters allows the operator to correct any deviations in real time during the construction process to keep the stone column within project specification and data collected from the data acquisition system such as amperage and lift rate are recorded and displayed in the real time alongside specified target values on an in cab monitor. So, this is a typical picture which shows the vibro replacement stone column and compaction grout columns installed for a new 
subdivision of town homes in Simarina. So, this is a common way you can see how the vibro replacement stone columns are getting constructed at a site for densifying the soil condition. This is another picture which shows vibro replacement of stone columns performed by four rigs to densify this four rigs are used to densify and reinforce the underlying soil to meet earthquake code requirements and control settlement for the new Voris hospital in Camden, New Jersey. Now, coming to soil improvement methods, for the soil improvement we want to reduce the liquefaction potential by improving the strength, density and or the drainage characteristics of the soil. So, the selection of the most appropriate method for a particular purpose will depend on various factors and what are the broadly classified soil improvement techniques like densification technique, reinforcement technique, grouting and mixing technique and drainage techniques. Now, in this the densification techniques where we use this dynamic compaction which we have discussed performed this dynamic compaction is performed by repeatedly dropping a heavy weight of steel or concrete in a grid pattern from a height of 10 to 30 meter to compact the soil at a particular site. So, the local liquefaction can be initiated beneath the drop point which makes it easier for the sand grains to densify. So, at a point by applying this dynamic load the local liquefa liquefaction can be initiated and through the process the soil finally gets densified. When the excess pore water pressure from the dynamic loading dissipates then additional densification also occurs because once obviously the excess pore pressure moves out then definitely the soil gets densified better. The deepest soil is densified first with a series of high energy drops of a widely spaced grids. So, what are the advantages like it is very economical way it can be applied at a site and can be applied over a wide range of various types of soils. But what are the disadvantages? It can be rarely used near occupied or vibration sensitive structures. That is if we want to use the dynamic compaction in a urban environment then it is not applicable or not desired because it creates no lots of noise and also probable damage to the nearby existing structures through this dynamic compaction process. The process is somewhat invasive requires strict control and monitoring otherwise undesirable ground movements may result that is some part may get more densified and another location adjacent to it may not get that much densified. So, automatically the what is the objective for which this process was started will not be fulfilled because the entire area is not getting uniformly densified. So, what are the various densification techniques like blasting involves detonation the first one we have seen A as dynamic compaction the second one of densification technique is blasting involves detonation of multiple explosive which are charged at a space of 3 to 6 meter apart in drilled or jetted boreholes. Ground surface rises immediately after detonation followed by escape of gas and water from the fractures of the material. The ground surface then settles 
and gradually the desired densification is achieved. Now, blasting is most effective in case of loose sand with less than 20 percent silt and less than 5 percent clay. The advantages of this blasting technique is it is very economical, but disadvantages are like it may cause damages to the nearby structure in this case also like if the blasting is not a controlled blasting it can produce severe damage to the existing buildings or nearby locality and it creates problem to the existing structure or produce significant ground movement at a particular location by generating the strong vibrations. So, it requires the use of potentially hazardous explosive which is obviously a very big disadvantage for using the blasting technique for densification. Effectiveness is difficult to predict in the advance and it requires strict monitoring otherwise undesirable ground movements will result from this blasting method. So, with this we will stop our lecture today with blast technique for the densification and we will continue our lecture further for this module 6.